Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this is going to be the first of potentially a series. We'll see how this goes. Uh, but the idea is I'm going to be posting puzzles periodically on the Discord, which the link is in the description if you want to join the Discord and hang out with us. Cool place to hang out <laughs> regardless. Uh, but I'm going to be posting puzzles and then talking about the problem and then talking about the solutions in videos to hopefully tie the things together. Um, in theory, there will be some sort of reward system for puzzles, but I haven't, haven't figured that out yet. Uh, we'll figure it out as we go. But anyway, I wanted to show you the first puzzle and uh, talk through how I thought about the solution as well as why I made this puzzle in the first place and then go from there. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so this is the puzzle. Um, Dang it, slightly off screen. Well, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll read that word when, when we have to read that word. But anyway, uh, today's puzzle uh, is a linting slash typing puzzle. The idea behind this is I want to require a specific function to only take string literals. Uh, so these are, for example, some allowed calls here. You can see that you, know, you call my function and you pass in a string literal. And that's, those are all legal cases. Note that there's a couple of like weird edge cases here, but they don't tend to matter in the actual case. The first being implicitly joined literals. So even though there's two strings here, this is actually just one literal, um, as well as you know, triple quoted strings or raw strings or Unicode prefix strings. Basically the first argument has to be a string and it has to be a literal. That's, that's what I wanted here. Uh, but it's specifically going to disallow the first argument not being a literal. So if, for instance, if you passed in you know, a variable or an F string or a formatted string or a number or something else like that, we're going to try and disallow all of those calls. And the background for this is I was thinking about this particular problem because I'm currently writing a... Um, a frame a security framework <laughs> heavy air quotes um for work and one of the requirements is the first or one of the one of the design principles is the entry point to this framework is a function where you pass it a credential name and it returns you back an opaque type and that credential name is represented by a string and one thought that i had was oh well if we port to this framework we still want to be able to audit all of the call sites and so I wanted an idea of like how I could force them to be auditable. And one way to force them to be auditable is to only allow string literals as the first argument. That way you can easily grep for the key and see if it's actually called. Whereas if you allow people to do string formatting and stuff, then you know all bets are off and <laughs> people can do whatever they want. Now, I didn't actually implement this for work. Uh, the API still allows string formatting for work. So I, I, this was more a theoretical exercise and an excuse for me to learn MyPy plugins, which we will get to later. Now, the the solution to this, or I'm going to show you my solutions. I had two different solutions. Uh, there are actually a bunch of different ways that you can solve this, whether you do it with the type checker uh, as a with a plugin or like a plugin or all sorts of stuff like that. Um, I I had two solutions. One was via a MyPy plugin, and the other was via a Flake 8 plugin. And they have certain trade offs between the two, but Anyway, I figured I'd show you this. Um, and before we get started, I wanna show you some of the troubles I had while implementing this and some of the ideas that went through my head that didn't work out. That way you see the full process. Uh, but if you wanna implement it yourself, pause now. Uh, and everything beyond this is going to be spoilers for, for my solution. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, do that. Oops. Okay, so I actually... <laughs> I actually decided to, uh, I mean, I named my function slightly different than the one in the problem, but that doesn't actually matter. What we're going to be doing is looking for this particular function and the particular call. So in this case, we wanna forbid this call, allow this call, and forbid this call. And uh, the first thing that I wanted to do with this, let's actually move this out of the way so that we don't accidentally show the answer already. Um, now, the, the first thing that we can do with this is just by specifying the type signature, we're going to be able to eliminate this particular call. So you can see if we do mypy t.py dot now, oh, well, we should activate the first one. If we do mypy t.py, you'll see that we've already eliminated the one that's not a string, but it is still allowing this call here. And my initial thought was, uh, what if I could make this a literal type and did I talk about literal types in a video? 
I think I did. Uh, I will link a video about literal types in the description. <laughs> Uh, my thought was to make this a literal type, and I wanted to allow all literals, and so I thought, oh, maybe I can just not specify the arguments here. Uh, but we get an error, oops, well, I'm typing in for literal, uh, but we get an error here that says that the literal must have at least one parameter. And so then I thought, well, what if we allow any literal? Is that allowed in the type system? And when we do that, we'll see that it cannot be of type any. So I thought maybe it can be a type variable. Uh, type var t bound equals stir. So this is a type variable that is a subclass of stir. Uh, I thought maybe that would be allowed, but no, it is not allowed. Uh, literals must have an actual literal as their arguments. Here, so it, it can't be this, and enumerating you know every single string as as your literal is is not really feasible. That's not going to really work out. So unfortunately, you can't solve this just purely with type annotations, which was my initial goal, and I may have used this at work if that would have worked out. But since it doesn't, uh, we have to resort to either a Flake 8 plugin or a MyPy plugin. Um, I have not done a video on MyPy plugins. I will probably do one at some point. Um, they're <laughs> They're fairly complicated, and uh, for better or worse, there's not that much documentation about how they work. However, most of the types that they return, I mean, they have type annotations, so it's really easy to follow the type annotations. Um, and at least the high-level APIs are straightforward. And so I was I was able to figure out a MyPy plugin after about 10 or 15 minutes of work. I'm not going to rewrite the plugin live, unfortunately, so this is going to be kind of one of those weird videos where I'm just like, and here's the solution, whereas usually I will type them out interactively for you. Um, but it, you know, <laughs> it took me a long time to figure it out, so I didn't want to do that part live. Um, also, I wasn't sure that it was going to work until I got to a particular point. But anyway, let's take that. Let's look at the MyPy plugin first. I'm going to show you how to enable MyPy plugins uh, first. So I made a MyPy plugin and a Flake 8 plugin. We're going to start by doing the MyPy plugin. And the way you turn on a plugin in MyPy is either you install it and uh, does it enable by default? I don't actually know. I think you can install plugins to have them enabled by default. Um, but in my case, it's just a local plugin that's sitting in my working directory, so I don't I don't have this installed. I'm just kind of doing this as a one-off. And for that, you can do plugins equals and then specify a file name, mypy plugin.py, and uh, MyPy will know to load from this plugin. And the way MyPy does plugin loading, ignore all the code for a second. The way MyPy does plugin loading is it imports the module and it finds a plugin function. It passes the current version of MyPy into this function, and that function is supposed to return a plugin class. Now, I didn't actually, I mean, I could have looked up the minimum version that this worked at, but I just said it works for any version, so I'm just going to return my custom plugin class directly. Uh, now, the, the this could be named whatever I want. Uh, I was following their documentation for MyPy plugins, which um, is here-ish. Um, it's fairly short, so it was not super helpful for me figuring stuff out, but I'm going to implement the... Uh, I think I implemented the get function hook, which is what what happens when a function gets called to find its return type. Unfortunately, you can lint the arguments as that function is being called, and that's how I ended up implementing this. Um, so the entry point to our plugin is this get, get function hook. It takes in a name, and it's supposed to return a callable, um, an optional callable. Basically, you can say, like, if this particular name is the one I want to lint, then I'll return a callable. Otherwise, I'll just ignore it and return none. In this case, uh, I'm in t.py, so I wanted to match the t.sumfunc, this function here, uh, and I wanted to check when that function gets called. So it should call this require only literals thing three times, one for each of these here. And inside my require only literals callback, which you'll see is typed here as a callable that takes a function context, this is a complicated mypy type, and it returns a capital type. Note that this is not the typing type. That was another piece of initial confusion that I had here. This is MyPy's internal capital type, which 
is basically a wrapper around types that um, has more information for the, the type checker. Fortunately, we don't have to construct one of these ourselves uh, in this particular example because we're only checking stuff. We're not actually implementing a full plugin here. Um, well, it is a full plugin, but we're not implementing a plugin which changes how the type system works. Um, but here's my plugin. It's actually fairly straightforward. Oh, and actually, I don't need to do. I had a more complicated helper for the initial version. Let me. Uh, uh, dot default return five. Let me simplify it ever so slightly. Um, so basically, what I did is taking in this function context, I can get the argument types of what my by thinks is being passed into it. Um, and I first had a short circuit if the types were not the right length. Uh, so if, and I don't know why this was a list of lists, but it's a list of lists for some reason, but the case that I cared about was exactly one item in both of those lists. So if it doesn't match that signature, hopefully MyPy will have told me um, in some other way that this is invalid. So um, like this will say, you know, expected one argument but got two. That was my hope. I think it's true. I didn't actually check it. Uh, then we need to pull the type out of the call. And the type can either be an instance, or it can be another type, or it can be any, um, or some other thing. So I had to make sure that it was an instance type, so specifically looking for this. And I had to check that the last known value was a literal. That way I identified a literal versus a variable. And if neither of those were true, then I would produce an error. And uh, you'll notice that any time that I'm returning here, I'm just returning the default return type from the function. This is the uh, return type that MyPy has already inferred from this function. Uh, and again, since we're not doing anything special with return types, we can just return this directly. Uh, you can also do some additional linting here, uh, but I found that this wasn't needed. So I was originally checking to make sure that the particular literal type was the right type, but um, the, the type checker already validates that for us because we did stir here. Um, but if we set up this plugin and we run MyPy on our Python file now, it should, uh, yeah, so we got too many arguments for this. That's great. And this is our custom error here for this call right here, expected string literal for argument one. And, uh, you know, we also got this error that we already showed before. Now there is one slight problem with this MyPy plugin and may or may not be okay for this solution. Um, I actually hinted to it because I forgot to delete the import for it. If you mark your variable as final or as a literal, and I did a video on final, so I will link that in the description as well. Final implies that it's a literal, and that makes it so that this is actually allowed. And that may be fine. And we can also do colon literal. Oh, I guess I have to do colon literal wat. <laughs> Uh, wait, what? Why didn't that work? Hmm. Well, my piece of code is slightly buggy. Uh, but anyway, there's there's kind of like a cheaty way to uh, pass variables in here. But because it's final, that means it has to be a constant. And because it's a constant, we can infer the actual value. So it kind of satisfies the problem that I wanted, but uh, not, a, not exactly perfectly. But anyway, that's my pure MyPy solution to this. Uh, next, I wanted to talk about my Flake 8 solution to this. And Flake 8 doesn't have access to type information, so you're somewhat limited in how you actually implement this. Fortunately, for the sake of this problem, uh, it's fairly straightforward to say that this is a string literal and this is a function named semfunc. However, we'll see in a bit that you can actually cheese this by renaming your function and then calling it with whatever. MindPy will be able to detect this, but Flagate won't have any idea because well, unless you implement complicated branch analysis and stuff and essentially solve the halting problem, um, you won't be able to, to figure this out. But again, all all linting is some amount of approximation and you know if if the user is trying to get around it, they'll find a way. Okay, but let's jump into the Flagate plugin. Um, and again, I did a video on making Flagate plugins, so I will link that in the description. Um, but we're, we're basically going to make a local plugin and not a full plugin because it's a little bit easier to do that. And in order to do that, so you can see I have this Flake 8 plugin, we're going to set it up by doing Flake 8 colon local dash plugins. 
and our plugin is going to be an extension type and uh, I think this is the syntax for this. I made it the code wat, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, we also have to do paths equals dot, that way Flicket will discover this. And I don't think I have Flicket installed, so I'm gonna actually do this. Um, and so with that, Flicket will import this module based on the, the, oops, based on the module name before the colon, so it'll import Flicket plugin, and then it'll pull this attribute off of the, um, off of the modules that it imports. So it'll find this this way. And a plugin has a name and a version. I didn't really care about the name or the version, so I just filled them in with placeholder values. And a plugin needs to be initialized with some set of parameters. This is how Flakegate decides which way it should call it. So if you have a parameter named tree, it will pass in the AST tree to that. So I want to do an AST based plugin, so I did this. And um, inside my actual implementation of the plugin, so that's this run function, which has this complicated generator return type. Um, I basically traversed the tree, looked for something that was a call, and that call was a name, and the name was some func. And if it didn't match those, I just ignored it. So this is any other piece of code in the module I will just ignore. Uh, so for instance, like this is a function def, and we don't care about function defs. We really only care about calls down here. And so I made sure to skip all of those. And then uh, I had two lint errors in order to validate this, because again, uh, well, if we're not dealing with MyPy, we don't have something that checks the number of arguments. So I had to make sure that there is exactly one argument here. So if the length of node.args is not one, or there are some keywords, I emitted a wat001. <laughs> error code that says expected one argument and then I can just check directly whether it is an ast.stir and this will only match if it is a string literal and so if we run flake 8 on this file um, and we ignore these two errors up here you'll see that on line 15 which is this line here we expected one argument we've got two it does notice 16 because uh, you know it doesn't know about final it doesn't know about typing and it knows notice it uh, it noticed 18, which is not a string, but an integer. And there were a couple of people on the Discord which produced solutions which basically looked like this. So this isn't that much different than theirs. Uh, but like I said before, if we do func equals some func and then did some func one, like is not going to know any idea about that. Uh... Oh, wait. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> if we do func equals some func and then do this, yeah, you can see that there's no error on line 22. Um, because, yeah, I didn't encode that cleverness into the uh, into the linter. Also, you'd have to look out for you know aliasing and imports, and uh, I think that's mostly it. Uh, but anyway, that's the first puzzle. <laughs> Hopefully, you found this interesting. Hopefully, you learned something. I definitely learned something while implementing this uh, about my pipe plugins. And now, <laughs> I don't know. I think I might write a MyPy plugin for some stuff that I've been I've been meaning to do for a while um, now that I realize how approachable it is. But anyway, hopefully this was interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, wait, that's the other outro. There will be more puzzle videos. Join the Discord, hang out with us, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.